scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Hello, Madonna. Let me show you two scary verses. I'm surprised they are in the Bible. These verses will make you respect God in an unusual way. Proverbs 22, please. We'll read verse 2 and then we'll read verse 7. Remember that all scripture is inspired of the Holy Ghost. It's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction in righteousness that the man of God may be mature. Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 2. If you're a Christian, please read with me. One, two, read. The rich and the poor meet together. Colon. The Lord is the maker of them all. Stop there. Look at this insulting statement. Couldn't you just say human beings, inhabitants are on the earth. God is God over them. I mean, what is, the, what is responsible for this insultive stratification? The rich and the poor. He never said the rich Christian or the poor Christian. The rich anything and the poor anything meet together. In the same territory like a classroom hear me it says god is the maker of them all not the maker of them so he never makes them so he made them as human beings they classified themselves into different dimensions so whether you choose to be lazarus or abraham god made you so he made you Lazarus made heaven. Abraham made heaven. The difference is the quality of their impact on earth. There is nothing that is tied to Lazarus. But God names his name. He decides to route through Abraham even for salvation to come to people. In Galatians chapter 3 and verse 29, it says, If ye be Abraham's seed, then are ye heirs according to the promise. Abraham verse 7 of the same Proverbs 22 please let's rush but you have to listen to what I'm saying now this verse oh dear this is the verse that in the name of Jesus Christ may your eyes be open to understand what it says this is not just about prosperity this is a, this is this is warfare right there it's not about money read with me please one to read the rich rule it over the poor uh -huh. and the borrower is servant to the lender hold on that means there are two ways to make you a slave and a servant two ways if i want you to be a slave i make you poor and if i want you to be a servant listen carefully i make you a borrower You don't subjugate people by subjugating them. You manipulate the economy around them and they fall into servitude. The Bible says the rich will rule over the poor. That means the rich unbeliever will rule over the poor prayer warrior. Are we together now? The rich will rule over the poor and the borrower. If you decide to replace poor, and put your name or your family and your nation it still holds true 
the rich so it's not just about prosperity and cars and houses it's a battle for influence it's a battle for the lordship of christ it's a battle for your soul i told you the ultimate commodity for exchange in this kingdom is your soul not just your money not just your products and services satan wants your soul and he can use everything to get your soul what shall it profit a man hear jesus the businessman speaking if he gains the whole world and loses his soul so transaction can be done with the soul you can gain and you can lose and the commodity is your soul are we together the next verse please ecclesiastes chapter 9 very interesting story that blessed me three verses we'll start from verse 13 ecclesiastes chapter 9 please this wisdom have i also seen under the sun and it seemed great unto me what is the wisdom one two please let's read together there was a little city uh-huh and few men within it and there came a great king against it and beside it and built great bulwarks against it next verse now now there was found in it a poor wise man stop this is a story the bible is giving us what a paradox that the man is poor and yet wise poverty and wisdom does not go hand in hand but here is a situation we have a man who is poor and wise and the bible says he by his wisdom did what delivered the city yet no man remembered that same poor man next verse then said i we're still reading wisdom is better than strength uh-huh nevertheless the poor man's wisdom is despised and his words are not heard so the bible says it is not enough to have a message you must have the resources to cause that message to be heard that a man's wisdom delivered a city yet the influence to preserve the honor that came with listen listen let me tell you this i hope you know prosperity played a role in salvation that jesus is hanging on that tree sir and no prayer warrior could bring that dead body from the cross no angel could bring the dead body of the living christ on the cross it took a man of influence and prosperity called joseph of arimathea he used his influence and spoke to the king and offered his virgin tomb and jesus was buried it took prosperity and influence for salvation to come if you look at prosperity just as some money mongering agenda of some lost driven christians here and there i know there are people that approach it that way and that is incorrect you see that but this is a battle for your soul it's a battle for our children and our children's children is the battle for the continuity of god's program within a territory it doesn't matter what our message is let me tell you the gospel is heavy it takes wealth as the ark bearers to lift it you must understand this there are certain levels of economic empowerment if you do not have you will never hear certain instructions from god god searches around egypt he wants to save his people from a famine that is coming and checks every jew and nobody even jacob is qualified to see that dream so he goes to a man of influence called pharaoh and gives pharaoh the dream because only pharaoh had what it would take to make the dream come to pass there are certain levels of influence and prosperity if you do not have it's a waste for god to reveal certain things he can't tell you to build the school because it's number one you will not believe it and number two you will let other children die because of poverty so he will revelations will keep moving around abel kuta looking for men who both love god and have the empowerment it will pass your house you love god you have qualified but you failed the test because you've ignored the place of finance 
Hallelujah. Hmm. I will never pastor a people who love God and are mediocres. I have seen the disaster that mediocrity brings. It will make you compromise on your values because whoever feeds you guides your convictions. You only have a choice when you detach yourself from the influence of Pharaoh. If you are in Egypt, you must serve the God of Pharaoh. Was it not hunger that took God's people to Egypt? What else took them to Egypt? It was hunger. So when Satan wants you to go to Egypt, he doesn't say go to Egypt. He will cause that there is no bread. And then hunger will take even a covenant family to Egypt. Hunger will take a man of God who started well to Egypt. Hunger will take a man of integrity to Egypt. Hunger will take a politician who vowed that he would stand for truth to Egypt. It's not about prosperity. It's about your soul. Let me tell you how you know is Satan prospering you. You prosper but not even as your soul prospers. Two of them cannot go hand in hand. Satan will never allow your soul and your pockets to prosper. It's impossible. But when God comes, he will cause both your pocket and your soul. So he says you prosper even as your soul. That the more I prosper, the more I know God. And the more that money means nothing to me. That it does not sustain the ability to take the place of God in my life. You are frustrated, Satan. If you have both money and passion for God, you have destroyed Satan. Think how frustrating it is. When a man comes to your company with a product more superior than what you are selling. You have no advantage. You stand helpless. That's what God wants the church to become. For as long as we continue to beg around and beg the heathen, then they will give us supplies, but at the expense of our soul. There is a fraternity that is happening with Babylon, and hunger is the motivation behind it. So our sermons are coordinated by the hunger that is in our belly. Our fraternity with men and women who are very vocal about their displeasure about the kingdom advancement. But we will hate them for a while and hunger will force reconciliation. But there's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. They will break every chain, 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 break every chain. Please sit down. Where money will no longer be the basis of giving your son or your daughter in marriage. But the will of God and purpose. Many people have poverty has made people to miss their life partners. The lady knew that this guy was the will of God. You don't like me now. We can reconcile after service. Listen. Let me tell you sincerely. Make a vow with your destiny today. That you will never you see you are born to look like your parents but you die looking like your convictions and your decisions so i i understand what happened i understand the background but don't let men speak to you and say can anything good come out of nazareth let me tell you this chasing money all your life is a cost you will never have the time to serve the purposes of, the, of god we need to be delivered from that cost it's a cost your lifetime is too short to chase finances so god must raise men and women in this season who can access the provisions of the kingdom and step into dimensions that will give us the time and the influence to birth the purposes of god there are certain agenda of god that are so heavy it takes more than revelation to birth them Nike the chains Falling 
的。Oh, I hear the chains falling. Listen, I'm saying this because there are many of us who have been indoctrinated that any any pursuit to gain financial independence is carnality and is unnecessary in fact it is thought to be pungent to your spiritual progress no a man can be derailed when your motivation is corrupted but when everything squares up and christ becomes the center and his purposes become the object my brother and my sister know that it is a cost to live in insufficiency until you see the blessings of a blessed life you will never appreciate and contrast it to the inconvenience that a life of servitude brings it's not just the issue of i hate poverty it's not just the issue of i will not suffer it's not just the issue of i need a car that is that is not a superior conviction is warfare the battle for your soul the battle for your children's soul the battle for your grandchildren's soul the battle for 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 space upon the earth the word glory from its root essence is the word wealth the weightiness of a man measured by his financial capacity because a strong man's wealth is his defense there are sermons you cannot preach when you are beggarly it's suicidal break every chain break every chain let me tell you this i've not had any discussion with our dear man of god but sometimes you see him continue to challenge you that when what you do is done with understanding it will work wonders in your life it is true you know the day you got born again do you know the day you entered into wealth there should be dates if it is true this like you say i got born again on the 25th of january 19 this and that you can say on this day i waved poverty and it waved me back we parted ways for good and now i'm focused to serve the purposes of the kingdom i used to think you had to do a lot of things in life it's not true it's poverty that creates activities when you are free you will there will be enough time to focus on the things that matter i guarantee you poverty can occupy you it can add jobs that are unnecessary add relationships that are useless May your children never ask you one day and say, Daddy, you've served God all your life. But where were you when the lifter of men was lifting your friend, your uncle, your auntie? Our society is full of angry people today because they look at everybody around their circle and he's successful except them. And they have to build a theology to explain it because their pride cannot allow the consistent probings. What happened to you? Were you not there in the conference? Break chains. Break. This is what God is. Let me tell you this. I come from a background where my father was the last most successful person aside from me today by the grace of God. Can you imagine such a family? my prayer is that god will establish us fast listen let me tell you life is a function of time and it's important that certain things be done fast please don't get used to delay it's, it's a situation that needs the power of god when you build your first house at 60 it is not a blessing don't feel bad but it's not a blessing at 33 years jesus kept the world at a standstill and commissioned those who will go at age eight joash was king over israel at age nine josiah was king over israel 
please let's challenge ourselves parents let me encourage you challenge your children to not sit down and say i'm young the concept of i'm a child must be destroyed from the minds of young people otherwise they will stay even at 40 and still say i'm a child anybody that can think and take decisions is no longer a child break chains break it's a philosophy that has been sold to africa that keep us very poor a man of 45 will tell you he's the last born of five children and that gives him the license and the convenience to cross his legs and allow his children suffer while he waits for help and aid from other people the western world although they may not receive the things of god they have been able to adopt a philosophy that inculcates responsibility early are we blessed let's just go to something else but let me tell you this anybody who is blessed today will tell you he has tasted poverty he has tasted prosperity i can tell you which one is better from the word from experience and from wisdom it is terrible to remain in poverty where you go to prayer you will not know when you have stopped praying because the worries close your mouth what demons could not do you go to a place of prayer and in five minutes you are leaning on the wall ah, pta meeting this i thought this goofies was hundred thousand now they've increased it do they want to kill me remember you're a prayer warrior and now you are standing by the wall and calculating and your wife says honey the food is ready and you will not know when you turn to answer if you if you shout at me again see i'm not shouting i was I, let me tell you this poverty is a spirit the same way when someone is possessed he can act not the, many fathers are good people something is making them the way they are nobody is really bad we are products of influences that must be casted away so that the real us can be seen you know how good people are when they become old when they are retired and all the trouble their children have gone you see how i say ah, you mean baba you were always this kind you say i've been like that you were like that as a child and as an old man but in between satan programmed a system that changed you that will have families in the name of the lord that can decide to take a day off for family worship and you are not afraid because the financial wherewithal to sponsor that risk instead of running around waking up in the morning and sleeping late at night only to eat the bread of sorrow that you can guide your children and say as for me and my house we have accessed the keys that will allow us serve the lord so i come to your house on a wednesday morning sir what are you doing and you say we've decided today we are fasting and praying what is this with all of you rolling in the carpet and your children rolling too you say because there is a covenant in this family to serve jehovah my children will serve my god and they say so what about your economy you say god is faithful he has given us the wisdom and the eyes of the eagle he has taken us out of famine we have found a place called brook cherish where there is a raven that can come to feed men now i hear the chains falling i'm not teaching on finance but it is important it is important a pastor that refuses to prosper must compromise not will compromise listen there are two doors to step into the realm of greatness there is the door of value and there is a door of need if you enter through the door of need you will dance to every principle and every conviction if you step into your sphere your circle of influence as the one who is in need of help let the great see you and know they are great but they can discern your value when our children are hungry and have to eat in the houses of other people they will lend their God and they will lend their ways. If you come to my house and eat my food, then you have to dance to my convictions too. And if I do not honor the God of heaven, then whilst, um, well, you see, I come from the north and I know, I know what prosperity can do to convictions. That there is a level of hunger 
that you can have satan will come to you this year and say no no in jesus name i will stand for jesus he will leave you he knows the hunger will force a negotiation he will come two years later and say i'm still here you say okay what did you even say last year you remember you were stronger last year but as the hunger grew the nation of israel said buy us buy us not buy buy us was it not hunger that made two women eat their future they carried their future and ate it and they were about to eat another future when a prophet came and said no he didn't do counseling for them he said i know the problem by this time tomorrow the remedy to eating your future is the arrival of the blessings of christ the last one and we pray break chains break mm. the last system of dominion is the supernatural the supernatural component that must be captured in the life of a believer the supernatural the supernatural the supernatural the supernatural is not for men of god the supernatural is not for pastors jesus gets a madman healed and they come to him and they say you do this by beelzebub is the prince of demons in other words this is not men listen the bible says it is the lord's doing help me please and it is that means if it is the lord's doing it will always be marvelous you don't clap for me for walking it is human to walk but when i fly it must cause your attention because where the carcasses are there the eagles will gather it will take the unusual manifestation of the wisdom the grace the power the intelligence of the spirit upon the saints to cause and compel kings to come and every time kings come to you they don't come empty-handed asked the queen of sheba she kept hearing about the exploits of solomon but was too arrogant to come it was common she had results herself but his consistency compelled her and she got up with all her, her her bounties and came to solomon theologically speaking it said that she was in the palace of solomon for six months it took six months when she saw the dexterity and the organization everything within her the palace it said she had no bread it said half of this was not told me there is a dimension of the supernatural that must come upon our lives that when your child produces a result that is not given to mere men to produce is a testimony signs and wonders are miracles with messages on them it's a signature from God through men to men saying I am God and I can still glorify myself in men Ah. Hello, walk, 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 walk. He's turning things around. Hello, walk, 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 walk. He's turning things around. Hello, walk, 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 walk. He's turning things around. That's what God is doing to someone. Listen, let me tell you this. You will never attract the attention of this arrogant world being natural. It will take a dimension of unusual results. There, there has to be something, a signature of God's hand upon your business, upon your life. If you do business like any other person, they will call you a colleague. But when you do it by the finger of God, you are no longer a colleague. You become a reference. Was it not men they called Zeus and Hermes? These were Greek gods. Men. Samuel was a man who was like God. Not one of his words fell to the ground. That God will grant us access. What then is the advantage of the spirit of the living God upon the saints? It's more than praying in tongues. It's more than falling down and rolling. The Holy Spirit is the advantage, not an advantage, the advantage. And when he, the spirit of truth is come, John 16 says, he will guide you into all truth, guide you into all truth, guide you into all truth, guide you into all truth. It says, and thine ear shall hear a voice saying, 
this is the way walk ye in it you will find rest for your soul was it not job that said there is a path which no fowl has seen the whelps of the lion has not gotten there there are virgin dimensions in the spirit that make for the victory of the saints it will take being supernatural to attract this generation this is not an ignorant generation this is a generation that is knowledgeable and enlightened when you are normal and you are regular you do not command the attention of this generation as a pastor as a businessman as a politician there must be not just the god factor but the spirit factor upon your life elihu sat with the three friends the other two friends of job and whilst all of them were talking he kept quiet and looked at them he said i wanted to speak but i was afraid because i was young and then he says that there is a spirit in man 32 and verse 8 of job he says and the inspiration of the almighty the breath the breath of the almighty can make men of understanding can make men of understanding can make men of understanding the holy spirit came upon the ordinary apostles and they transformed was it not an encounter that solomon had with the god of heaven in the night and he got up being given an understanding heart the first case that came before him was a case of two prostitutes who slept and killed their children and switched their children and solomon looked at them this could cost him his reputation he was about to judge a life and death case and having the supernatural wisdom of god he said bring me a knife that knife was the word of god because the word of god is sharper than any two-edged sword it is the divider the discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart the moment the word came the true secret was revealed the discerner of the intents and they saw the the wisdom of solomon it was the supernatural exploit of david over goliath that made the nation of israel to sing the songs that saul killed one thousand and david killed ten thousand men came to david in the camp of adulam a cave called adulam the bible says men who were in debt who were distressed and they vowed that they will make him king he turned them into mighty men they were called the men of david to the extent that one would fight with a sword that would cleave to his hands transformation is not natural it doesn't just happen by principles there must be a divine hand of god where you turn a man from this to that a superior version of himself is turning things around will turn your life around And Elijah prayed and told Ahab, saddle your ass, for I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. And Ahab began to run. And Elijah, the Bible says Elijah was already there late. But the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he gathered his loins and ran on barefoot and overtook the chariot of the king down to Jezreel. There is a grace that comes upon you whereas it will take men 10 years to be established you come by the finger of god and by christmas this year you are standing here and kneeling down to say i, I have heard that god can change men but i have not seen it in this fashion that's what you are receiving as we conclude you have stayed in church long you have to get something to go back so that they will laugh at you and say church people they are back again ha! is turning things around yeah is turning things around Listen, I hear all the wonderful things and I thank this church and I thank everyone for loving me and loving our ministry. But let me tell you this, this man you see standing before you is a testament that when God puts his hand upon you, there is no man born of a woman 
that can thwart his purposes over your life that by the finger of god god will take you to places where you look left and right nobody is your age mate there even them they are in shock and saying you are not supposed to be here and you say he brought me oh he this one is the finger of god god brought me have you heard that proverb that that in one day a child can be born it's not normal but he said as soon as zion travails it's a possibility in one day born in one day the economy of a city changes in one day do you not hear that god the word of god is quick and powerful not just powerful quick 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 you don't have dominion if you don't have dominion over time the apex of dominion is not dominion over things is dominion over time when you can bring time to your hands and make things happen by the spirit so when someone here who is sitting and sick now and maybe in the next five ten minutes all of a sudden you check and that you are supposed to go for a surgery and it's gone that one is by the finger of God is the handwriting of God upon your life we're praying Saul goes out to meet a man called Samuel because there was a situation in their life and they needed a divine intervention please listen and Samuel looks at Saul and says, Is it not because the Lord has anointed you to be king over Israel? Pours the horn on the oil on his head and then gives him three instructions. He said, Number one, the lost donkey has been found. When you encounter the supernatural, restoration at the instance of an encounter. Number two, he said, Whilst you are on your way going, you will find three men with two loaves of bread each. And they will salute you honor and give to you remember they don't know you does that look like strangers shall feed your flock that you are on your way going before you went to meet the prophet you were on your own no man saluted you you went in misery now with one encounter you return and you find men who will give you their bread let me tell you everybody is a giver is what is on you that compels their giving just because they don't give to you does not mean they are not givers everybody can give including satan so if it is not coming to you you've heard me say it again and again it is what is on you that controls what is around you let me give one example and then we are going to pray ah someone's life is changing oh listen the person to really thank after this convention is your man of god and his wife I'm here and done and on my way but the testimony that will happen in your life you will be too grateful some of you will wake the man of God by two and say daddy I'm sorry it's not my usual practice but please wake up you have to hear this ah, ah. I have heard with my ears but now my eyes have seen it that God can lift men please let me have two gentlemen come the gen yes any one of you right thank you you stand here my friend you stand here stand at the opposite side now watch this it's an illustration to bless you please turn look at these guys this man is the destiny helper of this man and they are all in a bell kuta. move slowly and continue to pass yourself and turn are we together he's praying oh god change my life here's his destiny helper passing him every day in Abel Kuta. there is no grace to call the helper keep going again lord when will you change the story of my life his helper is passing him but he comes to this convention and something comes upon you you didn't even know that something has come upon you now watch this oh dear this guy is under the anointing help him um i wanted to use somebody for example oh come anybody come sorry just just leave him you have received your own is not a story again watch this now look at this this gentleman I, I, are you getting what i'm saying now now because of this anointing walk slowly when you get to yourself stop it would have been as usual except for this now when he gets there this anointing starts speaking to this man 
listen the anointing has a voice the anointing now begins to call this man and says no you can't pass him like that again it was like that but after a conference and he will stop and give this man something you call it favor you call it breakthrough but it is that when god wants your cup to run over he anoints your head not your cup thou anointest my head but the effect is seen on my cup you reign you reign Elohim you reign you reign you reign Elohim you reign you reign you reign Listen to me let me tell you this we're rounding up we're rounding up listen you see every time god wants to change your life he introduces a man never say men do not matter no it is always from god through men to you it is never from god to you from god through men to you a new anointing from god through men to you destruction from satan through men to you men will always be in the center watch this come david is in the wilderness seeing visions of himself become king god is here on the throne he had rejected saul as king but in the middle of prophecy a man shows up called samuel and says i refuse david from being king God decided that David is king. David is ready to be king. But a man stands in between and says no. Whoever told you men cannot stop the will of God. Read your Bible. Hmm. I want to show you something and we are going to pray. If you hear what I'm teaching you. Remember I taught you yesterday. That there are three dimensions to experiencing the power of God. And that it is not always about your personal sacrifice and your prayer life. There are times that God wants to help you. He knows the process of transformation will take time. So he will bring you in contact with a grace he has vowed with. This is why we honor men. We don't honor men because of their bodies. We honor men because of the sacrifice of alignment that has happened in the secret place that has made God to swear his name upon their life. That they represent portals, conduits of spiritual possibilities. And God comes to Samuel and says, how long will you weep? seeing that i've rejected saul as king in other words samuel i beg you you are delaying somebody's destiny get up take up your horn i am god but i am limited this is the world of man that's why the world had to become man to come here it's illegal to operate here if you are not a man so the almighty god is limited by men that's why prophecies prolong because the men with the level of grace to make that prophecy come are not there let me tell you something when god speaks over your life it will take a grace to make it so when jesus was born he didn't just show up there were two prophets in the temple called simeon and one another prophetess they were interceding even so lord come maranatha come jesus did not just show up because he was the son of god There is the prophetic dimension of lifting there is the prophetic dimension of dominion and in the next five minutes you are coming under that influence listen let me tell you my brothers and my sisters i know that there are men who believe that every man is just a joker and every man is just a hungry man looking for money or pastors are... no 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 there are men who have vowed a vow with god there are men that have become systems by the grace and the predeterminate counsel of god that you come under the influence of their grace everything about your life must show yeah na 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 yeah na 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 yeah, 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 na 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 na, 
na 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 Hallelujah. Our time is gone. But in the next two minutes, this is our final session. I want you to cry that in not whatever must live your life today, as far as God is in heaven, I join my faith with our Father. I'd like you to cry to God in the next five minutes. I don't know if there are people who are tired, pastors. There are realms that we must enter today. There are levels of grace and anointings. Please. Where is that drummer that played for this man? I need somebody really. Where is? There's one place. Shabarakatosia. Are you praying? Sheranana. The mighty one is about to have a convocation in this place. Sheranama. 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 Have you heard this proverb? That in one day city is born. Pastor, that you can enter it. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you